Hey everyone, Brett from Kitchen Table Commander here. I'm bringing you another Top 10 Commander video. This time we cover the Top 10 Mono Black Commanders. I'll be using stats from EDHREC.com, but giving you my take on the deck as usual. Before we get going, I want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you know the second we release a new video. Oh, also if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends on social media. With that out of the way, let's get into this list. Before we get into the Top 10, I should give honorable mentions to Shieldred Whispering One and Chainer Dementia Master. They came so close to being in the top 10 that I would be remiss if I didn't mention them. Shielded's strategy is to play creatures with enter the battlefield effects and then sacrifice them. This way you can bring them back over and over and take advantage of your now superior board state. Cards like Dictate of Erebos to double up on Shielded's effect and It That Betrays to get control over the creatures your opponents are forced to sacrifice are win cons in themselves. Chainer's strategy is simple, put creatures into the bin and then play them for cheap. Or in the case of Merciless Executioner and Fleshbag Marauder, over and over and over. Creatures like Kokosho and Massacre Worm are great for this strategy. Cast them at a discount and let the good times roll. Now let's get to the good stuff. Number 10, Skitherix the Blight Dragon. Skittles, as he's so affectionately called by many, is a very straightforward strategy. You play Infect. I'm pretty sure that Craig Blanchett is the creator of all 467 decks on EDH Rec, but there is a reason for it. Infect may not be the mechanic that people like to play against, but in Commander, where it's still just 10 Infect to lose the game, it's a powerful archetype that can be very appealing to some players. This deck usually includes cards like Hand of the Praetors to give all your other creatures Infect if they don't already. Phyrexian Crusader gives you an aggressive attacker. Icar Rats gives every player a poison counter, so it's fair, right? Plague Mirror is a mana dork with Infect, and Contagion Clasp and Contagion Engine are nightmares for your opponents. Giving creatures minus one, minus one counters and then being able to proliferate at will can be game winning. Needless to say, this deck will make you a target, so unless you're playing 1v1, maybe leave it at home. Number 9, Micaeus the Unhallowed. So Micaeus is a fun one. He's like a crotchety old man. You're having a party that is only barely audible and he calls the bylaw officer on you for exceeding the noise limit. If he can't have fun, then neither can you. This deck is all about sacrificing creatures and bringing them back with Micaeus. Walking Ballista and Triskelion comboing with Blasting Station to do infinite damage to anyone you want, while Gary and Puppeteer Clique annoy your opponents to no end. Basically what I'm saying is that this deck might be fun once or twice, but after your friends learn the hard way how powerful Micaeus is, they might ask you to play something different next time. For a competitive EDH league, feel free to play this deck. I just don't recommend it with friends, unless you secretly hate them. Number 8, Yeheni Undying Partisan. Speaking of decks people will hate playing against, we've got Yeheni. This deck is a commander beat face deck with a sacrifice sub theme. By sacrifice, I mean forcing your opponents to sacrifice. Cards like Butcher of Malakir, Merciless Executioner, and Dictate of Erebos force your opponents to kill off their own creatures, giving Yeheni a boost. Equip him with Blade of the Blood Chief to give him even more counters when creatures die. Then what, you ask? Well, you make him unblockable with Whisper Silk Cloak or Rogue's Passage, and then take out a player with a single hit. Worried someone is going to use spot removal on Yeheni? Well, he comes equipped with a panic button. Sacrifice a creature and he becomes indestructible until end of turn. This deck isn't oppressive or unbeatable, but it's very resilient against board wipes. It wants a lot of creatures to die, so expect to be dropping tons of board wipes yourself. Number 7, Sidisi Undead Vizier. Sidisi wants to be sacrificing creatures every turn, turning ETB creatures like Plaguecrafter into pure value with Shieldred bringing it back every turn until your opponents have nothing to defend themselves with. Erebos God of the Dead and Archfiend of Despair keep your opponents from gaining life, in the case of the Archfiend, doubles the life loss your opponents had that turn. There's usually an ad nauseum in there somewhere if you like that sort of thing, and it now includes Skullstorm thanks to Commander 2018 to storm off, because guaranteed Sidisi is going to get taken out multiple times. With Commander Tax making it harder and harder to cast her, you're going to want both of the rituals, Dark and Cabal, to get that extra bit of mana to keep bringing her back. Number 6, Liliana Heretical Healer. Given her character's love of dead things, it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that this is a zombie tribal deck. Cards like Waste Not, Rise of the Dark Realms, and Liliana Death's Majesty make tons of zombies, while all of the other Lilianas help support your plan. For lore reasons, this deck includes Liliana's Contract and a slew of demons as an alternate win condition. Demons like Razaketh, Belzenlock, Blood Gift Demon, Harvester of Souls, and Runescarred Demon give you bombs to drop later in the game that all give you an added benefit with their abilities. Number 5, Erebos, God of the Dead. Erebos is a pretty straightforward deck, you don't want your opponents getting any kind of advantage. Obviously with his ability they can't gain life, but with cards like Gary, Crypt Ghast, and Coco Puffs, they'll be losing life pretty consistently. Also obvious is the auto-include combo of Exquisite Blood and Sanguine Bond. I feel dirty just saying its name. Until you get that combo off, you have Dictate of Erebos to make your opponent think twice about killing your creatures and Archfiend of Depravity to keep your opponent's board at a nice manageable size. Whip of Erebos helps to keep your life total respectable, while Phyrexian Arena gets you added card draw. 
Shieldred makes another appearance on this list to help keep your Army of the Damned coming back. And finally, when your opponent thinks it can't get any worse, you cast Exsanguinate to finish them off. All of them. Nope, no degenerate plays here. Number 4, Shirei Shizo's Caretaker. Shirei cares about the little guy. Well, sort of. He only cares that they died. This deck relies on low power creatures that can be brought back for, you guessed it, value. Repeatedly sacrificing Abyssal Gatekeeper to Viscera Seer for the scry or with Skull Clamp for the draw. Then trigger Blood Artist, Pitiless Plunderer, open the graves or dictate of Erebos and you'll be coming out ahead real quick. Shirei's ability to bring creatures back at the beginning of the next end step means you can block without worry of really losing your creatures. And when that triggers, you can get a 1-1 bat from Desecrated Tomb, giving you flying attackers or just more things you can sacrifice to the seer. Number 3, Ghoul Caller Gisa. Something, 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 zombies. Now, while Liliana always seems to have spells that involve zombies, Gisa is the zombie queen. Well, not the actual queen of the zombies. That would be Verena, I guess. Gisa is as close to zombie tribal as you can get. While there may be a few non-zombie cards in there, the majority of the creatures are the shambling, rotting kind. Because of Gisa's ability, the main goal here is to increase the power of this typically small creature type, so you can create huge hordes of zombies and overwhelm your opponents. Lords like Cemetery Reaper, Undead Warchief, and Lord of the Accursed. This deck isn't without its big threats, despite being made of mostly 1-1s and 2-2s. Threats like Diagraph Colossus and Unbreathing Horde, who both come in with counters based on the number of zombies you control and in your graveyard. These can get huge, which means even more power on the board when you use Geese's ability. Or you can just win with Army of the Damned and Endless Ranks of the Dead. I mean, it's your call. Number 2, Gaunti, Lord of Luxury. This deck is simple. Cast Gaunti. Thank you, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit that like button. Just kidding. Well, mostly. This deck is all about getting Gaunti to enter the battlefield over and over, so you can cast all of your opponent's coolest cards. If you expected to see cards like Helm of the Host, Blade of Selves, Strionic Resonator, and Panharmonicon, you'd be correct. Having multiple ways of copying Gaunti's ability means more sweet spells you can cast, and fewer your opponents can cast. Erratic Portal and Conjurer's Closet also make an appearance to give you even more ways to bounce Gaunti for more sweet, sweet exile action. Dead Man's Chest is a card I didn't expect to see in this deck, but there it is. Giving you the same effect as Gaunti, but when your creature dies instead of when it enters. Rubbing salt in an already painful wound. What your opponent won't expect, however, is letting your commander go to the graveyard. Why? Because this deck also includes Nim Deathmantle to bring him back quick and give him a boost and intimidate. Awesome. Well, you waited long enough, so I won't tease you with a long, drawn-out introduction. Our next commander needs no introduction, so that's why I'm going straight into it. No beating around the bush here. He'd probably gnaw through it anyway. Number one, Marrow Nar. Rats. Plain and simple. Rats. This deck includes every single rat you can think of. Plague rats, bog rats, graph rats, typhoid rats, stronghold rats, burglar rat, ruin rat, pestilence rats, chittering rats, crypt rats, carrion rats, zodiac rat, pack rat, rancid rats, ichor rats, rabid rats. <sighs> you get the idea. This deck wins by being gross, swarming your opponents with tons of cheap rat creatures with sweet abilities. Oh, but why stop there? This deck also includes Door of Destinies, Coat of Arms, and Vanquisher's Banner to give massive boost to all your rats. If you're a fan of Kamogawa Block, then you're in for a treat. Because this deck has so many Rat Ninja, Samurai, and Nizumi, it'll knock your socks off. I may sound like I'm not a fan of this deck, but honestly, the more I look at it, the more I want to build a version of my own. Most rats aren't expensive with the exception of Mero Narher himself at $28, so it could make for a fun budget deck that might even be competitive at your local game store Commander League. There's a reason this commander tops our list with 860 decks. It's cheap to build, fun to play, and can win pretty consistently. Give it a try. Well, that about does it for today. What did you think of these commanders? Are you thinking of building any of these decks after seeing this video? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and you want to see more, you can help out the channel by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. You can also hit the notification bell to make sure you stay up to date with all our content. It helps the channel and it's completely free. If you want to throw a couple of bucks our way to help us improve the channel, you can do that through our Patreon at patreon.com slash kitchen table commander or through our sponsor Inked Gaming. Use the affiliate link in the description below to let them know we sent you and you can use coupon code kitchen table 10 at checkout to get 10% off your purchase. You can even pick up the kitchen table commander playmat while you're there. As usual, you can find me on Twitter at kitchen table command, on Instagram at kitchen table commander, and on Twitch at Kitchen Table Commander, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll leave links in the description to all our socials. It's been a blast, and I'll see you in the next video.